So, turbine auxiliaries. We're going to talk about lube oil. So what is the purpose of lube oil? Keep the bearings. Lube. Lubricate and cool the bearings. That is correct. So we got bearings. on either side of all your sets of turbine blades, on either side of the generator, another one on the generator collector end that I don't fully understand. Steady support. Steady support. That's the name of it. Steady support bearing. And then you got two of them in between the IP and LP sections. Or you got one of them, but it's a slightly different animal. So the two types of bearings, journal bearings, provide vertical support. And then this one is the thrust bearing, which provides lateral support. So so as the steam is going through the HP turbine, it's pushing one way, and as it's going through the IP turbine, it's pushing the other way, and then the LPs should pretty much be balanced, but this difference between the thrust that you're getting on the HP and the IP has to be canceled out to keep it from rubbing somewhere. So journal bearings, thrust bearings, lube oil. So we've got a lube oil tank. Ooh, I'm changing colors because I'm going to be drawing way too much for that thing to be suffering already. So you got a lube oil tank, and then there are three lube oil pumps. There are two normal pumps, an Alpha and a Bravo, and then there is one emergency pump. So the Alpha and Bravo pump go and tie together. And then inside the tank, there is a, they call it a plug valve, but it's a pressure reducing valve. And then the emergency pump ties in downstream of that. And then we come out. So what kind of pressure are we talking about? 105, 106 off the main loop wall pumps. All right, so. We're running right to the middle between 100 and 110 PSI on the main lube oil pumps. Then downstream of this valve, it's 28 PSI on most of the header. But the reading you take, the reading you get on top of the skids, you're correct, is in that 100 and 110 range. All right. So, from the skid, we go, or from the tank, the pumps, then downstairs to the coolers. And then we've got Close cycle cooling water flow in the opposite direction. What kind of temperatures are we talking about? 110. 110. I'm feeling 108 because that's the actual set point. The 110 tells me that you're doing your readings. 
<laughs> All right. And then we go to the duplex strainer. Back up. Go to all these bearings. And then you lubricate the bearing and then come back. And then but you got a bunch of temperature for every bearing, every place you got metal rubbing, the lube oil makes its own path back and you get a little sight glass and you get a temperature element, so you got a digital reading of the temperature and you got a temperature indicator, so you got a local reading. And how hot the oil is coming back varies a little bit, well it varies a lot depending on what bearing you're looking at. Uh, so we're talking what, 125 to 162? And then that flows back into the blue bull tank. All right, when you try and walk this down, it is very challenging because they have a concentric piping system. Concentric means it has the same center, and that means you got a pipe inside a pipe. So, You come from the pump and you go in there and that's your your 28 psi and that is full flat up with oil and then on the outside of that the return header is actually the same pipe except bigger right so then the oil there is not filling up that whole thing it's just draining in the bottom and making its way back to the tank. The reason for this is that in a crack, rupture, oil leak kind of situation, uh, a fine mist oil spray is like a very dangerous environment to have. So they designed it so that if you get that crack, instead of leaking in the air, it leaks is captured by the outside pipe and just drains back to the tank. Now this can affect the flow to the bearings and you can have bearings start running hotter but you will not have a space that's dangerous to us. It's just the equipment. Just. It's just the multi-million dollar equipment that we're responsible for taking care of. comes from the tank and then it ties into this header and then it goes to the bearings and it comes back from the bearings and back to the tank. And that is blue oil system pump. All right. So what else we got? That's the gist of it. That's the main of it. That's the important part. That's the part that keeps the plant running. But there's support to this. So we've got the conditioning skid. So and that's got a pump on it and then you've got a pre-filter. And then you've got the coalescing filter. And then that returns back to the tank. What does a coalescing filter do? gets the water out. So similar to the, the coalescing tank we have back at the back end that collects the water out of the air system. So it's a whole bunch of like fabric in there that slows it down and then the water is heavier than oil so the water settles at the bottom and then this has like a little level switch that can tell whether there's oil or water and it's got a solenoid valve and it goes to a drain.
That's your little sight glass there, too. Right there, bud. You can see so much in it. So it's a sight glass that is dark and dirty and hard to read. But what you're basically seeing is that it's always full of oil. And what you would be looking for is a clear spot at the bottom where you got water. And, yeah. All right, we've got a sight glass for the tank itself. Our sight indicator, a level indicator, a little flappy dudes. And then there's level switches coming off of it, telling that whether the level's high or low. And those are actually pretty close together. The high level and the low level are only like nine inches apart on that tank. If that low level switch comes in, then you lose the coalescing, the, the conditioning skid, that it'll trip off that pump, saying, no, you don't need to condition anything. You, you just keep the level you got. Uh, if you that low level switch is in, you, it will not trip the pumps, because clearly we want the pumps to run. But it will keep you from starting the pumps. So it says, hey, there's not enough oil in this tank to be starting these pumps, because we know this level's going to drop further, and we know that you're going to lose suction on your tank. It's going to be bad. I said three pumps. Why are there three? Well, it takes one to run, right? You back up and you DC. Okay, so you have an emergency pump that is powered from the DC system. It's coming straight off the battery. So it is more reliable power. And then there's pressure switches. And there's a weekly test where you can leave the pressure off the pressure switch and you watch the pump start and you swap the AC pump. And then you watch the DC pump start. Does it say in there to run it for five minutes? No, but Wayne did the last time. I so it used shit. to say you run it for five minutes. And then somebody dug in the manual and said, why the hell are we doing this? There's no reason to do this. And I, being a Navy electrician that's worked around DC pumps before, says, well, there's a 30 minute, there's a requirement to have a monthly 30 minute run to keep the, the commutator in shape. Does commutator mean anything? All right, so on a DC pump, instead of having slip rings, you have all these separate windings that have separate electrical connections and little spaces in between them. That's called the commutator. So if you, if you look at where the brushes go, it's not one smooth ring. It's a whole bunch of little plates. And so, yeah, uh, there are, you know, on DC pumps, there have historically been problems with that commutator uh, building up if it sits there and doesn't do nothing forever, then it builds up stuff on it, right? Some sort of corrosion or something. And then when it tries to spin, then it won't make good connections on all the spots and you'll have sloppy run. Alright. And then there is also clean and dirty tank. It's deceptive. It kind of implies that there's something dirty in that tank. I don't know if we've ever had really dirty oil in here. We don't really use these tanks the way they thought we would. When the engineers designed this, they were like, oh, so when you need to change out the oil, you fill with the clean, you drain, you drain the whole system in the dirty, you fill with the, from the clean, you take it from the dirty tank, and you run it through your conditioning skid and cycle it for so many hours and then you take it through one more uh, move from the dirty tank through the conditioning skid into the clean tank. But we instead bring in a truck during an outage and we pay contractors to do it all on the trucks that they back up to the, the gate there. And so you'll have hoses running through that door for about three days. A 
along with the dirty and clean tank, there is the trip hazard pump. I mean the transfer pump. <laughs> and there's a little local control panel for it. And uh, we. <coughs> if you wanted to move oil from the clean tank, from the clean tank into the oil thing, then you would use a transfer pump. Or maybe you could use the conditioning skid. I'm not sure. This is stuff that is not done very often. I mean, other they're in the outage. I mean, they do oil samples and send them off. And other than that, during the outage, there's a big swap out all the oil thing. And I don't know if that's every outage. That might be every three years or something. And other than that, like maybe once or twice, we've had to actually add oil. That low level switch came in because all the drips added up. And there's the, the vacuum, the vaporizer, the, what am I looking for? Extractors. Extra, the air, yeah, extractors. So these are uh, blowing out the roof, and they are pulling a vacuum on the tank. And uh, because of the way the drain system works, it keeps that entire drain system under a vacuum. So if you do not have a couple of inches of vacuum on that tank, then you will have an oil mist at the bearings. There's an electric heater. Run out things to say. Is that everything about Lou Oil? All right, we're going to call it. I think Lou Oil is supplied to hydrogen cell on, correct? That is correct. And I'm going to hit on that in a minute. Okay.